Hey guys, this is Sarah. And I'm Zach. And we're back for another episode of Faith, Family, and Fitness. And today we're going to be talking about a, a topic that really has kind of hit our lives uh, several times over the course of our relationship and, and before. Uh, and I don't really know anybody who has not at least felt this way at some point in their life. And um, mm -hmm. that's just how you feel like when you feel like you have been cheated. Um, you know, that's with, with your job as a football coach and, you know, my job, you know, my job, my hobby as an athlete, you know, sometimes you do, you feel like you have been cheated, you've been overlooked, you have been unfairly treated. Um, and you know, that's just something I feel like it kind of got laid on my heart to talk about this time. Okay. Well, I've certainly, uh, you know, I, I think the definition cheated you know, it, it is a broader it doesn't just have to be in athletics. It can be in right. life in general. Mm -hmm. in your, on your job, maybe get passed over for, for promotion because the boss's son wants it or what have you. Some sort of relationship gets in the way or maybe it's a, you know, a cultural or racial or religious thing that mm -hmm. you get discriminated for, at least you perceive it that way. Yep. And what we're going to do is take a biblical look at it and you know, how we need to respond to it. We can add... <clears throat> some personal experience and what we learned from the times where things haven't gone our way and we it wasn't a good honest contest or a good honest reason for what happened it was done dishonestly or without any honor and that's kind of what we're talking about we're not talking about hey you lose a really tight game or contest or you go for a job right. and you and somebody more qualified or just as qualified gets it over you we're talking about being wronged in a, in a big way. Right, yeah. And so today, um, the uh, the um, verse that we have is from 1 Corinthians. Um, it is chapter 6, verse 10. And it says, Nor thieves, nor the, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. That was the one that jumped out to me. Um, and it's not just because I'm like, oh, they've got something coming to them. It's kind of like a warning you know, to people who who try to, you know, pursue their own goals, their own, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say, like, I guess, yeah, uh, you know, and, and will really, I don't know, do sac yeah, it. they'll sacrifice anything and anyone to get what they want mm -hmm. um, or what they perceive as being, you know, the best for them and not, and, and, you know, exactly the, the team or the group or the company. It's what's best for them. Um, that's why you have a lot of people, you heard the term golden parachute. I've heard that term a few times. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the things, you know, these people that take care of themselves and kind of everybody else just has to fend for them, fend for themselves. I'm taken care of. I got my stuff in order. Y'all are just out of luck. Yeah. Well, Philippians 2, 3, and 4 talks about looking to the interest of others mm -hmm. before your own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in <clears throat> our world today, you know, it used to be a big no-no. Nepotism used to be a big no-no. Yeah. And at least in the coaching world today, nepotism is almost a standard. Mm -hmm. And no matter how poorly um, these people do, you, these sons or daughters or what have you, you know, they're, they're given chance after chance because mommy or daddy, in my case, it's usually daddy, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> keeps keeps calling in favors and putting pressure on people uh, to give them give them jobs that they really don't deserve and and they ultimately end up failing at and I'm not going to call any names today we're not here for that um, but it, it's a it's a reality mm -hmm. and God gives different people for different things and I feel sorry for some of these kids who end up having to get put into positions that they can't handle and end up. You know, everybody doesn't say it. You know, people don't say much. They just kind of sit back and watch. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know good and well if they didn't have that last name um, or they weren't close friends with so-and-so or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be where they are. I'd much rather have lived my life the way I have and been cheated out of jobs a few times mm -hmm. or looked over for jobs or you didn't win this contest or maybe – we got a bad call in a ball game, which I would not so much say is cheating as just having an unfortunate event of circumstances. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'd rather live that way and know that what I did achieve, I got by good, honest, hard work and God's blessing rather than having things rigged for me because there's no joy in that. No, there's not. And, you know, that's something that we all 
like struggle with and I know there have been different times in my life where I feel like you know I had earned something not like I was supposed to get it but I had earned it you know mm -hmm. not just because of who I am or what I've done you know it's like okay I have, well what I've done but like what I had done to earn it not yeah. anything you know so I feel like that's something people do so much today is they they feel like they're entitled to things we do have this sense of entitlement um, that you know just permeates our society today and you know I've seen times where Zach has applied for jobs and has gone out for jobs with that people he you know he mentored you know are getting the jobs over him or people that have never even been associated with football have gotten jobs over him and it's not because of qualifications it's just because they fit a certain mold a demographic. yeah that that this person wants to have you know it's not necessarily you know what's going to make this team better but it's just like okay like this is what we have to have this is what we have to do so that we get looked at well and then, you know and i feel like that's something that that's that really does it does happen a lot in in the world of of coaching you see that a lot you see it a lot in politics um you know you see people who have never held a public office before all of a sudden they're senators or you know rep state representatives and 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 they've never really expressed any interest in politics at all and probably could not t name all 50 states if you know given a, a map so that's one thing that I think people really, that's when the feeling of I've been cheated. And I do feel like sometimes, and when in some of your ball games, I feel like you were cheated. I, it's not just a, an unfortunate event. No, like it was blatant. Like that was not saying that the officials were cheating, mm -hmm. but like I felt like your team was cheated out of a win or out of a touchdown or out of something because of, you know. Well, I, one of the things I'll say is, is <clears throat> with referees, they have a standard. And my specialty when I coached in college as a head coach was turning programs around uh, that had never been any good or had never even existed in one case and building a program from nothing into a nationally ranked program um, in a very short amount of time. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the referees have in their mind, wait a minute, so-and-so here should not be beating this other team. Mm -hmm. We must be missing something. They had to do something here, and they start looking for things. Yeah. And, of course, the coach on the other side of the field, I was a young guy or the guy from out of town that they didn't know from, you know, outsider coming in, and they're over there crying and saying, hey, man, they're holding us or they're doing this or they're doing that. And all you can really ask for it being fair, and I will say this, um, we don't have time for stories in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, but I've got some stories from my coaching days where there's no doubt that college sports are fixed at times. These are first-hand accounts. These are not conspiracy theories. These are facts. Mm -hmm. And you know them. Yeah. Uh, I think God showed these to me at a young age, so I would understand. I, I'm going to be honest with you still, I was so angry. Mm -hmm. Because what happened was I was actually not coaching in the games when I found these things out, and I heard them probably when I guess I sh wasn't supposed to, but God allowed me to. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I will say this. If you bet on sports, you're a fool, especially college sports, because the athletes don't make enough money that they can't be paid off. Um, and in, <clears throat> it's crazy because some of them are making millions the, of dollars. The lowest paid people in the NFL and Major League Baseball and Pro Basketball are who? The officials. You ever thought about that? I mean, they're not even full time. Mm -hmm. And yet they control the flow of every game. Now, I'm not talking about the pro sports being rigged, although they've been, they had a case where a referee was uh, indicted and, and served time in jail for fixing the NBA games. And he came to cut a deal with his attorney with a list of names. And this is a fact, you can look this up. Um, but we live in a fallen world. He had a list of names from other referees who are participating in the same thing. And the commissioner of the NBA, I'm not gonna call names today, David's turn, mm. but, but he said, no, we won't go any further, prosecute him and it's done. So these guys are still 
He's running up and down the court. And and I, you know, this has been well known for years. That's kind of why I like that instant replay stuff. And I'm yeah. like, you can. The instant replay has taken out some things. But in the basketball, it just says they want to keep the game close. Do they necessarily want one team to win over another? I don't think it goes that far. But sometimes you'll see a team kind of getting out to a little bit of a edge. And they'll be like, okay. And basically, I had inside information that their job is to entertain the people. Mm -hmm. And a blowout's not what everybody wants to see. Yeah. And if you notice it, too, in, in, in the tournament in March, mm -hmm. what always happens, one thing is the one and done has done this is level the playing field. You know, after the top 50 teams, I mean, 50 through whatever, 100 and some, however many Division One basketball teams there are, you, you just throw a blanket over them. It's not like before when you had, you know, uh, Sam Perkins, Hall of Famer, James Worthy, Hall, Hall of Famer, and Michael Jordan, best ever play, in my opinion, on the University of North Carolina. I mean, they, they were going to blow anybody out that wasn't really, really strong. Mm -hmm. uh, but Richmond or St. Peter's wasn't going to beat them. Yeah. But nowadays, the, 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 that Cinderella, we're having that Cinderella moment every year. Mm -hmm. It used to be Cinderella's once every four or five years. And now all of a sudden we get Cinderella's all the time. Yeah. They, they make money off of that. And anywhere there's money, there's going to be corruption. So I want to stop it right there for the day. Mm -hmm. And I'll save all my stories and get back on track yeah. with some of your thoughts. Well, no, I was just saying, thinking too, like, you know, I've seen that in, in some, you know, things too, like one, like a competition. I, I was in the competition, but I was not, this was not my, um, my class. So I wasn't directly involved in this lineup. Um, I was backstage waiting to go out. Um, I was doing a competition where it was basically two shows back to back. And <clears throat> these two girls were going for first and second. And then the, when that show finished, the other show started, same two girls came out going for first and second. And then in the evening when they were doing the awards, one girl won first place and the other girl got second place. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, you, you know, they it's the exact same lineup coming up again. You know, that girl's going to get first and the other girl's going to get second. So she's getting two first place trophies. That girl's getting two second place trophies. No, no, no. Zach sent me a text and was like, hey, listen, because I had won my class earlier in the first show. So I'm getting ready to go out. I'm like, man, I'm going to win my second show. I'm going to win a, you know, another show. And um, he's like, uh, you need to be really careful because the girl who won the last show just got second place in this one. So basically she went from first place to second place in a matter of what, 15, 20 minutes? No, about 30 seconds, honestly, because they kept on the stage. There's actually two guys. Oh, it was two There's girls. two guys, a heavyweight division of this show. And literally the guy who, who won second place, they, were going, they always call out, Fifth, fourth, third, second in the first place winner, like they do in the beauty contest. Yeah. They just don't call them runner ups. And literally, the guy for second place went to step out and get his award, and they called the winner from the uh, literally a minute ago, mm -hmm. uh, called his name, and they kind of looked at each other, and they both started laughing. Yeah. Sport of bodybuilding is kind of a running joke, especially in the pro ranks. You may finish second one week, win one week, next week you don't even place. Mm -hmm. There's no consistency there at all mm -hmm. i think that's what sarah's kind of getting yeah at. because so that may lead to feelings of being cheated you know it's like well, i just won you know 15 minutes ago how am i not winning right now like he didn't get better than me in 15 minutes you know so i feel like that you know that's something that a lot of it can lead to people feeling cheated like you said earlier when you're overlooked at a job um when you know you're you're not picked for a team when you know, you you know, if something unfair happens where you're like, listen, like, it's obvious I, I earned that or it's obvious, like, they're singling me out. I mean, I've had that happen before where I told you, I mean, this was, I mean, I still remember this because I, I, I felt cheated going into high school. I was an all-star on my junior high cheerleading squad, went to this new high school where I didn't know I was the only girl trying out for the cheerleading team that did not go to school with all these other girls because I had a transfer. And when they went through and did, you know, called out everybody who had made the team, it was me and one other girl that didn't make it. And the other girl was going from a freshman to a sophomore. I was going from eighth grade to freshman. They actually let one eighth grader from the junior high tryout, she made it. So an eighth grader, a girl that's going into the eighth grade, she wasn't even at the high school, she made the high school cheerleading squad. Guess what? Her mom was the coach. Well, then the girl who I found out later, me and the only other girl that didn't make it, 
she had cheered the year before. So unbeknownst to me, this came to me later from another cheerleading cheerleader who was a friend of mine. We played softball together. They had taken the girl, the other girl who didn't make it in front of the team and was like, you know, she was a good cheerleader for us last year. She just had a bad tryout. Uh, do you mind if we put her on the team? We're not going to have anybody stand up and be like, no, I don't want her on the team. I mean, of course, everybody's like, yeah, yeah, sure, the more the merrier. So it turned out I was the only girl that did not make the cheerleading squad. And they actually brought an eighth grader up over me. And she wasn't even going to that school. So, like, that's one of those times I can still remember to this day, 20-some years later, that I felt cheated. And so that's that's just one of those things you really, you, it can if you don't, watch it you can really build up um bitterness, bitterness. yeah that's what that's what i was going for mm -hmm. bitterness you know and, and envy in some cases where the person who got something that you felt like you had you deserved um you know you may start developing bad feelings towards them um which really starts to affect other relationships in your life so that's one thing that we do need to we talked about what the feelings are like and how do we fix these well, I think a couple of things come to mind to me. Um, I heard a really smart man one time say, bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting on another person to die. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. It's not worth it. Unforgiveness is not worth it. And you have to remember, if you view things through the eyes of Romans 8, 28, it says God uses all things to work for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. All things, meaning when you get cheated, when things don't go your way, he might actually be protecting you from something. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had coaching jobs where there's guys that promise me, hey, I'm going to hire you, and then they never even call me. Uh, if anything, you know, they, they, they ghost me. You know, they go to a new school. They don't leave their phone number behind. And these are people that claim to be big-time Christian people that I have helped in some huge situations give free advice to them, and they couldn't see what was going on, and I could as far as game plans and stuff. And you've been with me mm -hmm. and sat through one meeting, very prominent staff, uh, that was getting ready for a championship game. And I told them what they needed to do to win the game. And um guy forgot about me. <clears throat> uh, you know, I don't know how you do that, but, you know, what I've learned is God had a reason for that. Um, there's no need me sitting here getting angry or hurt about it. Uh, when the truth of the matter is, I think they've won like three games, three or four games in three years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not good. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, I, you never know what God's got planned, you know, but if you turn your life over to him, you can trust him. And this is the thing about having Jesus in your life is you can always fall back on him mm -hmm. and say, you know, I really think we should have won that. We really should have done this or that or the other, but. At the end of this, you know, I need to put my faith in him. Everything's going to be all right and keep my class, which is extremely hard to do. Because mm -hmm. you can really have a great witness in a situation because people see it too many times. Yeah. Or you can have a bad, you can lose your witness and damage it because you, you freak out, which I've done, I've done that too. And that's, it doesn't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, the, we, we talked a lot about things that can't happen to people. We told stories about things you know, we got this podcast, I'm sure, because they thought, well, man, this is a couple that's uh, <clears throat> been successful in a lot of things. But along with that success comes perseverance. You have to overlook and overcome a lot of adversity. Mm -hmm. And being uh, unfairly treated is a part of life. And everybody goes through it one way or another. Mm -hmm. And we all need to remember that. You know, we're not the only person getting cheated here. And sometimes it is intentional. Most of the time it's not. Right. And I think that's the most important thing to remember. Learn from it. And if you're really something you want, keep trying and praying about it. And let the good Lord give it to you when you're ready for it. That's that's probably the best advice I could give is Romans 8, 28. Just go back to that and view it as coming from God and know that he's got something better for you coming. Just act the way you're supposed to act. Don't lose your composure, which I struggle with from time to time. And keep your class and your faith in him. Yep. So, I 
don't think I could add to that. I think that was really good. So that just speaks and stuff doesn't happen much. <laughs> but um, I really appreciate you all watching. And uh, remember, if you have certain topics that you would like for Zach and I to address, please don't hesitate to comment below with those. Reach out to us on one of our social media outlets. Um, email us, whatever. You know, we want to make sure that we get to communicate with you all and answer any questions and not leave anything just kind of out there with you wondering, oh, you know, I don't think that, you know, this is something that we'll talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about it. You know, we, if we can get enough information, we'll talk about sure. it. So um, we appreciate you all watching. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Take care.